Hello, this is Atrump's VTL30 CNC wheel and rim repair lathe. This is the vertical turning lathe model where you load the wheel into the chuck this way utilizing gravity. It's a 14 inch to 30 inch rim as its capacity. It uses the Syntec CNC control for its operating. It comes with a four way tool post where on this side you would house the digitizing probe, this side the tools. We will show installation of the tools later. Some of the features of this machine is compact design, so you don't have a lot of room left to right, nor do you have an item where you have to hold the chuck up and do it with one hand, and the carriage goes in and out to be in the way. When installing the rim to the chuck for the first time, make sure it gets into the teeth properly on the chuck. If it is one side is up a little bit more than the other, that is improperly inserted, and please redo it. Use your wrench to tighten and adjust accordingly to fit the teeth properly. By rotating the chuck, we want to test to make sure that the rim is inserted properly on all three jaws. After installing the rim, one should always make sure that the rim is in balance. In order to do so, the machine has two buttons, clockwise and counterclockwise. These two buttons allow you to rotate the spindle in either directions. Please be aware that there are going to be moving parts when pressing this button. Please keep your hands, fingers, and any loose parts out of the frame. As you can see, the spindle is now rotating clockwise. To check if your rim is unbalanced, you will notice that your rim will be wobbling. As you can see, this rim is not wobbling at all so this rim is in balance. Installation of the probe, insert into the hole into the melting bracket. Proceed to tighten two sets of set screws. Loosen cap to insert cable. Sitting out of the cutter, make sure that the back hits the tool point top and tighten down screws manually or by utilizing the wrench. The selection of the probing angle is under two categories, front and side. 
The front is the face of the rim. The side is the side of the rim. The probing type falls within four categories. Two for the front and two for the side. Any of these selections may be used to your own personal preference. For front, it includes in to out and out to in. And for side, it includes down to up and up to down. The step over relates to the probing step. Set the distance between each detection point. The default of the step over is 0 0.01 inches. The greater the step over, the faster the probing time, but less accuracy. The smaller the step over, the slower the probing time, but more accuracy. The probing feed rate relates to the probing time. The default of the feed rate is 6 inches per minute. Lowering this value will increase the time during digitizing and probing, but decreasing its accuracy. Increasing this value will decrease the time during digitizing and probing, but increasing its value. When increasing or decreasing this value, take note of the profile of your rim. If your car rim is flat, you may want to increase your probing feed rate. However, if your surface of your car rim has many waves, then you may want to decrease your probing feed rate. Also take note that the more, the greater deflection of the probe on your car rim may decrease accuracy. The resurfacing feed rate relates to how far the cutter goes per revolution. For an OEM finish, the recommended resurfacing feed rate is about 0 0.01 inches per revolution. For a smooth finish, the recommended resurfacing feed rate is about 0 0.004 inches per revolution. Before digitizing, you will be prompted with three inputs, the lead-in points, the start points, and the end points. For the lead-in points, there are two important details that one should know for the front and side. For the front, Z must be greater than the highest points of the car rim. For the side, X must be greater than the highest points of the car rim. After digitizing, the probe will retract back to the lead-in points. If the probe is lower than the highest points of the car rim, then obstruction will occur and the probe may be damaged. For the starting points and end points, your input should be about 1 8 of an inch above the digitizing points. MPG stands for Manual Pulse Generator. MPG goes within two categories, the mode and drive around. The purpose of the mode is to allow one to jog more precisely and conveniently. To utilize the MPG mode, go to the mode setting and turn to MPG mode. Then use the hand crank to turn to the positive or negative direction. MPG drive around falls within two different functions, digitizing and resurfacing. The purpose of MPG drive around during digitizing is to allow one to safely move from the leading point to the start points and preventing inaccurate points that lead to the breaking of the probe or probe stylus. To utilize this function, go to MPG drive around button, press it until it turns green. Set the mode to auto. Press F2 to start digitizing. Press F1 to confirm digitizing. Then move the hand crank in a positive direction to move forward and move the hand crank in the negative direction to move backwards. MPG drive around during resurfacing allows one to safely move from the leading point to the starting point and preventing imprecise touch points, offsets, and extreme cuts. To utilize this function, set the mode to auto. Then press the MPG drive around button. Then press the green button. Then you may move the hand crank in a positive direction to move forwards and a negative direction to move backwards.
When checking the graph for errors, the controls for the graph are page up and page down to increase or decrease zoom amount. The arrow keys are used to move the zoom rectangle and press enter when you're ready to go to that directed zoom. Zoom in on the simulated graph to check for errors if they may occur during digitizing. These errors will appear as slight bumps when the surface of the rim should be flat. When checking the graph for errors, the controls for the graph are page up and page down to increase or decrease zoom amounts. The arrow keys are used to move the zoom rectangle and press enter when you are ready to go to that directed zoom. The zoom on the simulated graph is used to check for errors if they may occur during digitizing. These errors will appear as slight bumps when the surface should be flat. These errors on the graph may be the cause of change in probing feed rate, step over, or a faulty probe stylus. Setting touch points. The touch points are used to calibrate the differences between the probe touch point and the cutter touch point. If these points are not accurate, then the resurfacing process will not be accurate either. When setting touch points, always set the probe touch point first before setting the cutter touch point. Failure to do so will cause inaccurate data. The offset is the distance between the cutter and the rim. Before resurfacing, it is recommended to set the offset to 0 0.015 and use MPG mode to make sure the cutter does not immediately cut too deep. The front offset will always be a change in Z and the side offset will always be a change in X.